Hello, and welcome to another Fire for Developers tutorial video. Uh, my name is Gino Canessa, and today we're going to continue on our saga of profiles and validation and trying to make things uh, a little bit uh, easier for us to consume over time. Uh, specifically, today we're going to jump into slicing, which we haven't uh, touched on yet. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, we're actually going to end up using some inherited profile things, uh, which, uh, again, is another new topic for us. So, as always, there is a lot to do, so let's jump right in. Uh, I have the pack the uh, same project open here, uh, and actually I'm actually going to uh, do this quickly here uh, to show. Uh, I play with my uh, git back and forth on a lot of branches all the time, and uh, I think I show this sometimes, but uh, just in case, uh, we can see that the requested and resolved versions are all out of sync. Uh, and that does not leave everything in a happy state. Uh, and so the simplest thing to do is actually just rerun .NET package add with those same packages and, oops, helps to do the commands in the right order. Add package. And now when we do .NET list package, uh, we can see that everything is in the right versions. Uh, when you get these two out of sync, a lot of times they won't run, or they'll run and give you unexpected uh, versions and things like that. So we just want to make sure that we have everything in a good state when we start. And to check that, we're just going to run F5, uh, which should... Ah, I did make a change here when I was uh, playing with things, but we'll go ahead and actually make this change right now. Uh, and that is because in order to look at the things we want to look at, we're going to need to change the, uh, we were looking at patient before and we need to switch because patient doesn't have anything with slicing in it. And so we're going to go ahead and make some of these things a little more generic. Uh, and that is to say, instead of passing in patient for everything, we want to say resource and change this to resource. Uh, and for our resource, and that will help here, and we're going to have to do the same thing on all of these. So we just want to call this a resource now, and then we can clean up all of these. Like patient JSON should be a resource JSON. I think that's the last one. Perfect. And so now instead of patient, we can delete. Uh, the other piece of this is in our launch JSON that we had set up. We want to pass in the resource JSON file name and resource. Uh, since this isn't tracked in Git, that was throwing me off after doing the prep work. And when we take a look, this looks good. We can see we have all of our random output. We have our resource. We have our operation outcome. And when we look in here, we have our resource file and our outcome, which was clean. And apologies here. There we go. Something there in my eye. Uh, perfect. So that brings us to a good starting point. Now, what I'd mentioned before is when we look at the patient profile, uh, which we've seen several times, we have our simple extensions, we have our complex extensions, we have a bunch of must supports, and that's it. Uh, we're going to stay in the theme of uh, US Core, but I'm actually going to jump down to vital signs, and in particular I'm going to jump down to blood pressure. And so if we actually go to the right tab, uh, we have the US Core uh, blood pressure profile, and there's a few things here we want to note. Uh, some of them are more obvious than others. Uh, the first is this slicing. So we can see there's a new icon here that we haven't come across in uh, our videos yet. Uh, and it's this keyword of slicing. And so slicing is how you uh, control generally arrays to say what kinds of contents need to be in there uh, in kind of complicated ways. So complex extensions actually do that. If we come through and look at the complex extension we had used before, I believe uh, these are, okay, so they just use the binding 
instead of this, instead of actual slicing. Binding is just a kind of syntactic sugar, sugar because slicing is complicated. Um, and we can see that actually if you look at the profiling page, so this is just the fire profiling page. Again, I'll put the link in uh, GitHub as always. Uh, there's this section called discriminator, and that's ha different ways you can slice things. So value exists, pattern, type, profile, all these things that can get very complicated. Uh, lucky for us, these are actually pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a required pattern, and it has uh, these fixed values. So we're saying there has to be a coding, and the coding has to uh, have a system of loink and a fixed value of this 8480-6. Uh, which is to say that's what identifies that this is a systolic blood pressure uh, observation value. Uh, and same thing, you can see here there's the matching slice for diastolic. So we can see it's almost exactly the same. Obviously it says systolic or diastolic, uh, and then it has this different uh, actual code for LOINC. Uh, so we can see that these two are here. Um, there's this other loin code here, which is just the blood pressure panel altogether. Uh, and for loin codes, for people who aren't familiar, just because we like touching on everything, you can just go to loin and actually, I think we can just put the code here. Yes, we can. Uh, and so you can resolve this and get this nice text and kind of explanations about what, what this is and everything else. So in this case, uh, the top one is saying we're doing a blood pressure panel with all children, which are optional. Uh, and then you can see each individual uh, type of measurement you could have within it. And this is mirrored pretty well here. Uh, we can see the observation. We're saying this is the observation code is going to be a blood pressure. Uh, and same thing if we want to look at, you know, the definition of observation. Uh, oh, that's the wrong kind of link. Uh, but we can just go to, I have one of these open already, uh, the fire observation. And we can see this code is the type of observation. So we want to, we uh, definitely have that correct. Uh, and then we have these components. We can see there's two or more. Uh, and it requires that we have at least a systolic and a diastolic, but we could add other things. So if we wanted to here, we have the systolic, diastolic, and then we could add, you know, type of blood pressure or the blood pressure device cuff size or the uh, blood pressure method or some of these other things that could be useful. So that's kind of the, uh, the quick look at slicing that we're going to dive into. Uh, and then the subtle one here, uh, which I was playing with uh, having it pop up later, but uh, what's interesting, and you can kind of tell from this tree, uh, is all of these vital signs like blood pressure and BMI and height and weight and everything else uh, are actually derived from the vital signs profile. And so these things are here but we also have to satisfy this profile which has its own set of things so you can see here we have a status uh, we have the slices on the category uh, we need to have a subject we need to have an effective uh, either date time or period uh, and then it jumps down into all of these other things and actually there's a slice on this as well uh, so you can see it's unordered and open and it has at least one element so uh, that's kind of where we're going to be going in this set. And so let's jump in. Excuse me. So uh, we're going to start by just grabbing patient uh, because that one's relatively, eh, do we want patient or do we want to use birth sex? Birth sex has some of these other things in it. And eh, we'll just use patient. It's fine. So we'll copy and paste it, and instead of calling it patient, uh, we'll start with where we would expect to start and just say, well, what we want is US core blood pressure. Uh, and then we can hide that for a moment. So US core blood pressure, and we want to make sure we update all of our links and comments. Uh, so that everything kind of makes sense. 
Uh, same as we have many other times, we're going to go ahead and grab our profile URL, which we always need to do so that we can signify conformance. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And we'll go ahead and format those things correctly. Uh, now, just like we were doing in the other ones, I think we want to make our lives a little easier. And uh, we'll just change this to be a resource, since now we're dealing with more than just patient. Uh, but we do need this to make sure we're the correct type. Uh, so we only want these to apply on observations. Uh, and then, yeah, we can leave that. Uh, but we want to start trying to minimize the uh, amount of changes we need to make as we move forward. Uh, and that's just in general. Uh, you know, as you're iterating over code, you start finding the patterns and kind of uh, doing these types of things to make your life easier. Uh, so this is US Core Patient Profile Set. We don't want that. We want this to be US Core Blood Pressure Profile Set. Uh, and luckily, uh, same thing, since we've established this pattern pretty well already, now that we change this to an observation and resource, everything else is right. Uh, we have meta profile and everything else. So this would be a good candidate to just change into a static function that we just give a type to or something like that, but we don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, we want to go ahead and change this one too. We want to change the uh, patient to a resource for the name and the type to an observation. And we can go ahead and do the same thing, that it's going to go ahead and remove it. So we have blood pressure profile set and blood pressure profile clear. Those make sense and are pretty straightforward. Um, now the first thing we're going to need is this code and you can see same thing we just have a fixed of all these things and luckily code is one-to-one -one, so that's fairly straightforward. Uh, we can go ahead and start adding our constants as we usually do. Um, same thing, if we were just doing like loink things, we'd probably want to separate all of them out into one loink class, uh, but uh, we're not going to worry as much here because we just want this to uh, be an example code yet so far. Uh, so we need uh, code system loink, and that is actually going to be faster to type. Loink only if you type it correctly. Uh, and let's not worry about the comments yet. We can come back and fill them in for the non-obvious things just because my shortcuts are a little unhappy. Um, we also need uh, some codes. So we need, uh, we'll, we'll start with loink code uh, blood pressure panel. So this was that first one that we had grabbed. And same thing, I'm just copying, try not to switch screens quite so much. Uh, and so I'm just copying the fixed value here that's defined in the IG. And again, our goal is to eventually get to something that can uh, we can auto-generate these, but we need to understand the shapes of code first. Ah, there we go. This is a little happier now. Uh, so we can go ahead and grab this nice text and give us a pointer back to where we got it from just so that we have something nice like that. Uh, that's very odd. Huh, interesting. I don't know why it doesn't like it for the URL, but we'll come back to it. Um, if we keep looking here, uh, same thing, and I know I just said I was not going to do too many, but we're just gonna grab these additional values. There's one for systolic, and one for diastolic. So let's get all of our constants set up together uh, so that we're, we can be happier. Uh, and we'll do loink code uh, systolic, and that is 8480-6, which is just gonna be faster to type. And uh, we're going to do the same thing for diastolic, except that that is 
84 62 dash 4. I feel like these are random numbers that they're throwing at us. Uh, but we'll go ahead and keep grabbing these uh, systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. Perfect. And we could go and grab all these URLs and everything if we want to. Uh, I won't worry about it now. We can add them later. So if we look through, those are almost all the fixed values we have. We have two more. Uh, one, only one of them we're going to need constants for. Uh, and that's because here we can see that there are all these fixed values saying that we have to use units of measure. Uh, but in quantities, that's actually the default uh, that we want to use is uh, units of measure.org, UCOM uh, units. And so we just need to make sure that we grab this because everything has to be in this specific unit. Uh, so we can do something here, same thing, public const string. Um, and I don't know what we want to call this. Uh, we can call this uh, blood pressure unit for now. Uh, and we can uh, fill that out later. So that gives us all of our constants we need. Yep. And we can go and start adding these functions. Now we have some of these already in something like birth sex, just so that we have the right pattern. We want to make sure we keep our same naming conventions. Uh, and these, actually, let's look at race because it has a little more variety, just to make sure that we do things right. Uh, and we have things like US core race set. Uh, and U.S. core race text set and things like this. So let's add a function here for that. Uh, we're going to add a U.S. core blood pressure, and uh, this is just a code set. Uh, but we same thing. We want to have a this observation or a resource, right? And we can grab our null check because that's always a good one to check. Uh, and this is just going to set the required code. Uh, set the required code for a US for uh, blood pressure observation. Okay. Uh, now this starts to get interesting. And let me just, oh, sorry, dismiss this. Um, if we look here, we are looking at observation.code, which is a one-to-one. -one. Uh, but then it has a coding, which is a one-to-star, so it's an array. Uh, and then that has a system and a code that we need to find. So what would that look like to set? Uh, we can start by looking at that. Uh, we have something called resource uh, our resource, because it's our observation, dot code. And we could do a new codable concept. And we already nicely have our URL for loink. And we already have our code for loink, which is, what do I call it, loink code blood pressure panel. So we can just set that code. Um, we don't have to worry about the array or anything else because this is uh, the only coding we want in this case. Um, if we wanted to extend it later, things like that. Uh, and really, we don't even have to worry about clearing uh, because the code is one to one. It's required. So you would never, is it actually required on here? Yes, it is. It's required even just in observation. So we never really want to clear it. Uh, someone else might overwrite it with another value, uh, but we don't have to even worry about writing a clear function uh, because we'll never do that. Uh, then we start getting into the more fun things. So we need to uh, add systolic and diastolic. So US core blood pressure systolic set. 
and we're going to take in an observation and let's take a look again at our systolic and kind of figure out what we need. Uh, what's interesting is everything in this top portion is just fixed. Uh, here we can see that it's a required pattern and it has everything that's there is a fixed value. So we don't need to take in anything of this because we know if we're setting systolic, it needs to actually represent systolic. If we look at quantity, uh, there's only really two things that are fixed, uh, but that's a little misleading. Uh, and that's because this code is actually the same as this unit. Um, and the system is already defaulted. So since this is fixed and these represent the same thing, this is just the string version or the code version, uh, really, the only thing we can set is the value, uh, which is nice because now all we have to do is say something like dis decimal value, uh, and that's everything we need to set uh, systolic blood pressure. It helps if you spell things correctly. And we'll add more comments here, but I won't make everyone uh, sit through me typing them. I'll add more before I push it up. Um, now, this is a pretty complicated structure. So we need to look at the component, which is an array, and then we need to look inside that component and look at the code, and then inside the code, look at the coding. Um, so let's see what that looks like. Now, luckily, we do have enough type hinting to help us here uh, not make this quite so terrible. Um, if we were just going to add one, let's start with that case. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say resource.component uh, add, and we're going to add a new component component. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, inside the component component, again, we can always do F12 to see what's in here. Uh, but really, we can see it's the same things we were just looking at. There's a code, there's a value, data absent reason, some of these types of things. So inside this component, we need to set the code. And so we need a new codable concept. And same thing, we have a URL for loink, and we have a loink for systolic. Uh, and we don't have to worry about text right now. Now, the only other part we really care about within this is the value. And that's gonna be a new quantity. Uh, and again, these are just types that are here. Uh, we sh should be able to see, uh, oh, value can have different things, but in this case, it's required that it's a quantity. So that makes our lives easier again. Oops. And within the quantity, same thing if we look, and this is what I was saying, the system defaults to that units of measure we want. So we just need to set the value. Uh, we already have our blood pressure unit, and we don't have to worry about the system. Perfect. So that would be if we just add a systolic, right? Uh, the problem is we can only have one systolic. That is a requirement. So since it only has this value and that's all we care about, what we can actually do is just go and remove them. So if we go to resource.component, uh, we have link in here, uh, which will help us all. So we can say, go ahead and remove all, and we want to give it a predicate. Um, so let's see what, if we do a component, we want components that have a code, and that that code has a any, wait a minute, code, coding, there we go, uh, too many, there are too many layers here. Uh, and then within that coding, we want to see if the coding, uh, let's see, system is equal to the URL code system loink. And and I need to put one more. No. Uh, and the coding code is equal to systolic. Okay, so what are we doing here? And I have something incorrect here. 
Uh, cannot implicitly convert. Uh, da, 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 where did I miss? Uh, bull question mark to bull. So remove all. Any component that has a code. Uh, ba, 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 and we want to say this is equal to true. Okay, so that's a pretty complex uh, line of code here. Let's see if we can make it a little simpler. Um, what, we're, what we're looking for is we're looking for any component in the resource that has a code, as we need to see if the component has a code or not. And within that code, we need to traverse the array of codings and look for any coding that has LOINC and the systolic blood pressure component uh, code. And if we find those, we want to remove them. Perfect. Um, now, the code, yes, coding is any. And so we want to make sure that we're checking for anything that has that matching blood pressure thing. Um, Really, this is questionable if we would want to do this or not. I think we do. Uh, I don't think having two systolics on the same um, observation makes sense. Uh, so again, this is kind of one of those things that you say, well, maybe there's something else that also has a systolic or something like that, but I don't think that makes sense. So I think I'm happy just removing any that exist and then adding our value back in. Apologize for that. So that's pretty easy, right? Uh, and we just, oops, we want to do the same thing again uh, and do the remove. So US core blood pressure systolic set. We want to do a clear. And then we can actually just copy this section and clear it. Perfect. Remove all systolic P values and add a systolic EP value. Perfect. So we have these, and we can actually go uh, diastolic is uh, the exact same thing, with the only change being. Uh, that we're using diastolic instead of systolic. So we'll just copy these two functions, get them formatted properly, and do diastolic, diastolic, and then same thing, we need to change link code diastolic and put that everywhere. Perfect. And this is add a diastolic PP value. And this is remove all diastolic PP values. Uh, and this should really be add or update. Uh, because this is if you have an existing one, we will go ahead and change it. Uh, you could make the argument if you've added a, di a systolic or diastolic and put in some other annotations, extensions, things like that, uh, it would be better to find it and do it. We can do that. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it right now because I'm more interested in the shape uh, and then we could change some of these details in and out later, pretty simply. Perfect. So, Again, according to this, we are pretty set. So if we come back to our program uh, and we want to go ahead and remove all that old code, um, here we'll say, uh, we'll just put a compiler directive so we exclude this. So if um, patient, do that, that seems pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we can drop down to here. And that way we can use the same resource and not worry about anything else here. So we're going to do an observation 
called resource. And uh, we'll start with not setting anything, actually. And we'll just see what happens. Uh, but we should be able to do resource dot, uh, and now we have all of these nice extension functions as we had before. We want to set our profile. We want to set that code that we need. Uh, and we want to go ahead and set a systolic, and we'll say 100. And we want to set a diastolic, 70. That sounds reasonable. And we want to run this. And let's see what we end up with here. Uh, now, we do have a nice resource of observation. We have our US core blood pressure set here. We have some codes. Uh, we have a code, which is our blood pressure panel. We have a couple of components. Uh, and you can see we have all of our units and codes and all of these things set properly. Uh, but we also have these operation outcomes saying that uh, it could not resolve the profile. Uh, and that's because when we downloaded our profiles uh, several videos ago, we only downloaded for patient. So you could go and download the whole US Core profile and just grab everything. Uh, but you can also go and do like blood pressure, JSON, and download. So we'll go ahead and do that right now and drop the profile into the profiles directory. There we go. And so now we have under profiles, we have a blood pressure profile, which is perfect. And when we run this, we get some errors. A lot of errors, actually. So enough errors that let's open up our outcome over here. And we can go ahead and open up our resource just so we have it. And we'll put them to the end, though. We don't need this. We can look here. So we have our resource, and it's an observation, and we have all these things we've set. But we start looking. So we have some missing fields. And again, here we're just looking at the differential. So this is, uh, I highlighted this to uh, kind of show the dangers uh, that you can get into when you're working with profile like this, is this is just showing what the profile has added. If you look at the whole snapshot, uh, which has a lot of things, so it's uh, not always the easiest to look at, you can see there are things like status, which was already required. And so it didn't uh, flag anything here that it needed it. Same thing with subject, and same thing with effective. So, uh, and actually you can see here that we have these category things, uh, and these are actually not on observation. These are on the vital signs profile. So we mentioned earlier that we have the vital signs profile, and then the blood pressure inherits from that one. So uh, we can go in either order here. Uh, I think let's go ahead and do the vital signs. We're going to do the same thing and download the profile first to make sure that we can validate against it since we're already doing that. So we'll copy that into our same profiles directory. So now we have the vital signs and the blood pressure profiles. So that makes that a little easier. Um, <clears throat> And let's look at what we need to add for that one. The same thing in vital signs. Um, really, the status was already required, I believe, on observation itself. Uh, observation status, yes. So that's just saying that it's a must support. Uh, the big thing here is this category. So we need to do the same thing we did for code. We need to do for category. Um, since we just did this in blood pressure, we can copy and paste, and we can rename blood pressure to vital signs. Perfect. And we'll uh, very quickly try and do this, uh, and I'll just talk through, uh, but we're going to do the same things that we were just doing. The vital signs, uh, we're going to go ahead and set our 
URLs, all of these kinds of things that we've been doing a few times now. And these are observation, and that means I missed this on this one. Yep, observation, just so that we have things correctly. Uh, vital signs, objects. Um, I don't think we need loink, but we do need something else. And that is observation category value set. Uh, so we need code system observation category. And I can just grab that URL. Oops. Don't make that one as nice for some reason. So we can grab that one. We have the profile, update our comments. And what else do we need? Fixed value of vital signs. So same, just like we have these uh, blood pressure panel here, we're going to say um, we have an observation category vital signs. And this is just the value from this that's required. And that's listed there in the profile. And we'll worry about commenting here in a little bit. Uh, do we have anything else looking through? No. Perfect. So we don't need any more constants. Uh, we need to change our names. And we can go ahead and just do that uh, to replace all of them. And we updated our profile. Perfect. So we can see what yells at us here because we didn't do the rename. Uh, and here we were doing, oops, we're going to do US Core blood pressure and we'll just do the same thing. That fixes all of them. And that's the profile. So the profile we didn't have to make any changes to before. Uh, but this is not going to be the code. This is going to be the category. And we have URL code system observation category and observation category vital signs. This is already getting somewhat repetitive uh, because we've kind of gotten this pattern down. Um, so when we look, we need the category. And then all of these things are actually just from observation itself. So we're not going to worry about adding any of those here right now. And so we should be able to delete these and delete these. Perfect. So now we have the vital sign stuff. And that is a layer beneath. So we'll put it above for right now. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add the profile conformance, and then we'll add the category. Okay, so that was the first set of things that we needed in our outcome. Uh, the other one is just these kind of uh, required fields that we missed on observation altogether. And uh, we've dealt with that before, so we'll just go ahead and uh, grab the ones we need. Um, I believe it's just a matter of, oops, let's get to the program. We can add them here. We need the status, which we should get a nice type hint for. Uh, there we go, observation status unknown. Sounds reasonable. Uh, we do need the subject, and this is a resource reference. And we will do patient um, test. That sounds reasonable. Uh, and then we need effective. Now effective, we're not going to get great type hinting. This is the same reason why we're putting these extensions here. So we'll address that in a minute. But effective could be a date time, a period, a timing, an instant. Um, but in general, we need it to be, uh, blood pressure needs it to be the differential. Oops, I'm the wrong one, that's why. Uh, it has to be either a date time or a period uh, in vital signs. That's defined. 
So we'll make a new date time. And uh, we can do a date time offset. We can do all these other things. We'll do today 07.02, right? Uh, we'll just do 10 o'clock in the morning. Sounds good. Uh, and then it needs a time span just because it wants to be able to get the uh, time zone offset for that. So perfect. So sorry if that felt rushed, but uh, I don't want to waste anyone's time with repetitive things. Um, instance category is zero. Now I thought we set the category but we actually never changed it to category. And this, that's because that's not a codable concept, that's, we need to add one of these. So there's a category there. Now, same thing, we can see, yep, category is supposed to be an array, and then we need to check all these things. So, we want a new codable concept here, but we want to make sure we're not adding duplicates. So we need to do the same type of uh, kind of annoying check here to say we want to remove all categories uh, such that category dot, uh, what is it, category dot coding dot contains, uh, well, we'll just say any. Uh, that has a coding that has a coding dot system of URL code system observation category. And uh, coding dot code is equal to observation category vital signs. There we go. So we want to remove all of those. Uh, and we can try and make this slightly better, although it is pretty painful. Uh, and same thing, this is the one that we need to wrap uh, so that we say is true. So remove any coding that it has, that it uh, has all these things, and if it's null, uh, don't worry about it. Ignore it. Perfect. So those uh, kind of complicated link things. Um, if we didn't want to do them in link, oh, there we go, and we have a valid thing, we could break this out instead of doing this one line of code. Uh, we can just do, you know, for each, uh, and what is category? Category is a codable concept. So we can do a codable concept concept in resource.category, and we can traverse this way and remove them and everything else too. Um, it's six of one, half done with the other. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's very clear that we're just removing and then adding, uh, and it kind of uh, gets rid of a lot of nesting code. Uh, it's still doing, obviously, all the same steps behind, so we want to make sure we keep that in mind. Uh, but we can see now we have a nice valid observation. Our outcome came back blank, so it came back clean. We passed all of our uh, required fields and everything else. We can successfully validate uh, against US Core Vital Signs. And I thought we had added both. Let's check. Uh, we said both. And let's see. And here I think this is US Core Blood Pressure. And this is US Core Vital Signs. Oh, did we find a bug? Uh, we should have two profiles in our array here. Uh, and maybe we made our meta profile a little too simple here. Uh, and I think actually we just have a problem because this does not append in place. It returns a new one. So we found a little bug by doing this. We want to make sure we update this in all of them. So we can see this is a great candidate for um, and here this is still patient, uh, becoming a nice static function that we can just pass these things to. 
uh, parameterize that and make that nicer. So here, and we can see it, it passed validation. And these are some of the scary things that we need to make sure we always look at. But you can see, since we never added the profile for blood pressure, it only validated against vital signs. Um, generally speaking, when you're inheriting things and going down that line, that's what will happen is uh, the base, anything you add after still has to be valid. Uh, so, for instance, by adding the U.S. core vital signs, if we remove this altogether, we still have a valid observation. We can't do anything that would break observation. Uh, and it's the same thing. If we add blood pressure on top of vital signs, we can't break anything in vital signs. So now that that's all cleaned up, we can run again. And we can take a look to see what we get out this time. And we need to close this so we can see. Perfect. That fixed our profile issue that we had. Uh, and so now we can see it went against both of them, and we still have a clean operation outcome. So that is much better. Um, this is probably not ideal um, because in order to have a valid one, we want all of these things. Um, so what we could do is say, put all this in one factory method. Uh, and we'll do this just again, since we're trying to show what's uh, convenient. Uh, this would need to return an observation. Uh, and actually, we can just call it create because we're already in US core blood pressure. <laughs> um, and since we're actually going on this class instead of doing an extension, because we can't put a factory in the extension here. Uh, and let's look at what we have. Um, we can just create an observation. And actually, I think we already have that there. Perfect, we do. So let's look at what we have. Clean this up a little bit. Oops. Actually clean it up, that helps. Perfect. So if we want to create an observation, we kind of did the minimal set that we could to make something that was valid. Uh, and so we don't need a ton. Uh, we need some sort of status, and this is an observation status. So we can just ask for that. Uh, we do need some sort of uh, resource reference for the subject. Uh, and we need this effective. Now, unfortunately, like we said, there's a choice type here. Uh, we could try and restrict and do everything else, but uh, we can just do the same thing here that they do and just say any data type for effective. Uh, and then we just need a systolic and a diastolic, right? So we can go ahead and even add those. Oops. And decimal uh, diastolic. Perfect. So what we're saying here is we want to create a new valid US core blood pressure object. Uh, and we want to make a note here, this uh, must be a uh, fire date time or period. Um, and we could go and add checks for these, but uh, in the interest of time, since we're getting close to that hour mark, we won't worry about that. So from here, we just want to use the uh, values that we got passed in. Uh, and then we're going to set everything and we'll go ahead and add these numbers too. Perfect. Uh, but we do actually need to return the resource after we've created it. So now what we should be able to do is take all this code that we had written before and refactor it down to a nice observation resource equals US core blood pressure create. And we can give it an observation status of 
final, just to make sure we use something different. Uh, we can give a new resource reference of patient.factory. Sounds reasonable. Uh, effective, I am not going to go through and generate another one of those. Uh, and then we said, what was it, 100 over 70. Sounds reasonable. Perfect. So now we've taken all this code that we have to remember every time to add vital signs and set the codes and set all these profiles. And now we've just created one nice factory method that should return a full valid blood pressure. There we go. And that looks right to me. So you can see this has our new factory patient. You can see our status is final since we had changed those, but it still has all the profiles, all the category codes, uh, the components we need with the right units, everything in there. Uh, but it's just one line of code with a couple of parameters. Um, again, uh, we could probably clean this up a little more, a little differently. We can go and add checks to make sure that this is the right type uh, and things like that. But definitely as a developer, I'd prefer to use this instead of, uh, and actually by default, just going through resource and adding all of these other things and doing all that other code in line. So, uh, perfect. I will get this cleaned up and post it to GitHub. So uh, with that, I think uh, we're closing in on the hour. And uh, I think we made it quite th through quite a bit here with uh, slices and inherited profiles showing how both of those things work uh, and how to make some uh, nice code. And then we even ended up with the uh, factory pattern there for creating something that's very complicated in a very short uh, snippet. So uh, if this helps, please let me know. Uh, likes, comments, uh, questions, all that helps. Uh, and uh, if not, otherwise, until next time. Thanks. Cheers.